Now, let me talk about the numbers. Um, so in 2021, uh, he was in network for just about the entire year of, of, of 2020, a little bit out of network towards the end, but, but most of the year was in network. And in 2021, this practice produced in, in gross production, you know, pre-adjustments, before adjustments, right at $1.9 million, $1.9 million, very strong practice. And then he collected right at $1.4 million. So the $500,000 difference, that's not a collections problem. I want to make sure you understand that that is not a collections problem. The $500,000 difference between his production and his collection uh, is primarily made up of insurance adjustments. There, there's some other adjustments in there too. Like if we're doing any warranty dentistry or we're doing a charitable dentistry or we're taking care of family or, or team members. But the vast majority of that $500,000 was insurance write-offs uh, that that he had to subscribe to because of uh, his being a, a in-network provider. Well, by the end of 2021, he was now completely had completely resigned from all of the plans. And as we got to the end, Delta was the only one that was left. And in the beginning, if you remember me sharing this with you, he was on the fence about whether he would be able to resign from Delta or not. So we took a look at that. He wasn't sure. Um, and we took a look at the data. I'm very data driven. And one of the things we did is we looked at what percentage of his patients that he lost in all of the other plans when we resigned. And it was way fewer than he expected. Way fewer. He thought he'd lose a lot more patients. Yeah, he did lose patients. You know, there's no, there's no sugar coating. He lost some patients. However, there were way fewer than he thought. And I said, let's now take a look at Delta. He said, you know, Gary, I've been looking at this. And although Delta is my biggest one, it still makes me nervous. We had more patients collectively uh, in the other plans that we resigned from than I've got on Delta. I had more patients from all these other plans. Um, and if I have the same result that I have with Delta, if I have the same result, then I think we could successfully resign from Delta. And I said, well, you know, we call it... Um, reducing insurance dependence. We don't call it going fee for service and we call it reducing insurance dependence because every time you successfully drop a plan, you improve your practice. You don't have to go all the way to, for, to fee for service to see great results. However, if your goal is to be fee for service, then I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader because that's the way to get the most out of it. Uh, and we took a look at it. And by the way, uh, I'll add another dimension here. He was a, um, a Delta um, PPO a client. Uh, he, he did not have premier status with, with Delta. It was just Delta PPO. And he said, you know, I really think I could do this based on the success we've had with dropping all these other plans. I think we could do this. And then I added the kicker. I said, well, you know, doc, we've got a, a, a backup plan if it doesn't work. And he looked at me with bewilderment. He said, uh, Gary, what's that backup plan? And I said, well, if it doesn't work, just sign back up with Delta. And, and we both smiled uh, and, and laughed at that, actually. I said, well, of course, we'd never want to do that uh, because that'd be like surrendering, you know, flying the surrender flag. We'd never want to do that. But we actually have a backup plan if it doesn't work. Sign back up with Delta. And because you're PPO, you'd sign back up as a PPO. Delta would accept you back. And yeah, you'd have some explaining to do with your patients. And by the way, we've never had that happen <laughs> in my coaching. Never, zero, I've had that happen. But just know you've got that parachute if needed. You've got a backup plan. And he said, well, let's go. Let's do it. And anyway, by the end of 2021, he was, he was successfully resigned from all the plans. Now let's go into 2022, which of course we now have the full year's worth of data on. So remember the data uh, from 2021. The practice produced $1.9 million, collected 1.4. Those are rounded, but they're very close. Uh, I'm not rounding very much. They're very close numbers. Um, now let's talk about what happened in the entire year of 2022. In 2022, the office now collected one point or produced $1.8 million, $1.8 million, lower than the 1.9 before. Uh, however, they collected 1.7, 1.7. So his collections went from 1.4 to 1.7, a $300,000 increase in, in, in collections because uh, of, of the fact uh, that he's now able to charge his, his usual and customary reasonable fees, UCR fees. Um, now, there was still $100,000 worth of adjustments. If you're following along, then what was the difference between the 1.8 that they produced and the 1.7 they collected? The majority of those fell under the category of, of adjustments from our in-office membership plan, our in-office membership plan. 
That's where the majority, there were a few others, minor uh, team member dentistry, family dentistry, a little bit of charity, that sort of thing. But the majority of that hundred thousand dollars was uh, from the in-office membership plan. So compare those two years, 2021 produced 1.9, collected 1.4. Uh, 2022 produced 1.8, collected 1.7. Now I'm going to add the kicker that you might not be thinking. Maybe you're already thinking, wow, that was great, but it gets better. Let me explain how it gets better. In the first year, 2021, his overhead was based on having to generate $1.9 million. In 2022, his overhead was based on having to generate $1.8 million. So his overhead goes down. So not only did his collections go up $300,000, but his overhead went down because now uh, his overhead is based on 1.8 instead of 1.9. And these are exactly the, the kind of numbers. Of course, it's all prorated based on the size of the practice. But take those numbers and slide them around and you can project what might happen in your practice um, if, if you, you know, have the same degree of success that, that this practice had. Um, you know, we've done this now over 400 times in my, in my coaching work. And um, it, it, I, I still get really excited about seeing the numbers, uh, but I kind of feel like, well, I'm going to a movie that I've already seen. <laughs> However, I'll give you an example. I happen to be a pilot. Some of you might know that I'm a pilot, but, uh, or have been a pilot. I'm inactive now, but I have been a pilot. And uh, I really enjoyed the movie Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I bet some of you have too. And I think I've been to see it so far six times, but whenever anybody in the family wants to go see it, uh, uh, I will absolutely go with them again. I know what's going to happen, but I still enjoy it. Well, that's how I feel about what happens with my clients with the numbers. Uh, I know what's going to happen, but I sure love to, to see the results. So take those numbers and slide them around and do some projections with you and uh, see how different your life might be in that latter example. In that latter example. Now, some other things, doctor says, you know, Gary, I am enjoying dentistry more than ever. Now, uh, patients are more interested in what we call high value services. Uh, they're more likely to keep their appointments. Uh, we aren't, um, you know, arguing, uh, but patients aren't upset because their hygiene appointment, uh, you know, they came in five months and, and 29 days after the last hygiene appointment and, and they were upset because insurance didn't cover. We're not having any of that stuff happen anymore. Uh, so not only did the economics improve, but his quality of practice life improved as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, a little bit different episode, the Less Insurance Dependence podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'll bring it back full circle. Uh, remember, coming up on Friday, October 27th, is our next uh, RIDA uh, virtual summit. It's all done virtually. You attend from the comfort of your home or office, but get five hours of CE. It's noon to 5.30 p.m. There's a break in there. So that's why it's five and a half hours on the schedule, but five hours of CE will we'll give you a little bit of a break. Um, you can register at uh, rid.academy. Go to rid.academy. You do have to register. It's free. There's no cost, but, but do register. Also want to make a closing point. Uh, if uh, you're concerned about losing patients by dropping insurance, one of the best things you can do is you can replace Delta as a source of your patient with Google as a source of your patient using organic search engine optimization. And the best resource I know for that uh, is the digital marketing agency, EQUA, E-K-W-A. They're the, the agency that we use at my life smiles practice. It's also who I recommend to my clients. It's especially important to have strong marketing because you are going to lose some patients and you're going to lose the historic flow of patients that have come in from those PPO plans. Uh, EQUA has been kind enough to offer a free uh, marketing strategy meeting to any of our listeners. You can go to www.equa.com forward slash MSM. Uh, and that marketing strategy meeting will help you learn everything that that Equa can do uh, to help you master the world of digital, digital marketing. On that note, let me simply say uh, thank you for the privilege of your time. I do have a request before we wrap up. Uh, if you haven't written a review for the Less Insurance Dependence pod Podcast, please go on iTunes and write us a review. That'll work the same way that a positive Google review works for your practice. Again, thank you for the privilege of your time. I look forward to connecting with you on the next Less Insurance Dependence Podcast.